Welcome back to Patrick's Review. In this episode, Hit Lady. Now, before I do this review, let me point out that this actually today is my 21st of March. is my birthday at 10.35 today. <laughs> I lived through the 80s, 90s, 2000s, 2010s, and now into the 2020s. <laughs> and yes, I'm wearing a, face, a toilet paper face mask. It's you know, kind of strange with all the coronavirus going around, people self-isolating, and people staying at home pretty much. And I'll just try to keep making as many of these episodes as I can. I'll try to squeeze in one every three days or so. So just keep watching and enjoy the reviews. Now, this film, Hit Lady, is a 1974 telepic. It was one of the top-rated programs of the TV films of its year. And it's, it was written by uh, Yvette Mimieu, the actress that stars in the film. Actually, who, who would have thought that she would actually turn a really good script? Now, the film is available in a number of public, cheap public domain source bargain basement DVD multipacks, usually with average picture quality and no supplemental features. Now, for the story Angela DeVries is an artist who does some very lucrative side work as a professional assassin for the underworld, having been forced into the profession by being blackmailed into murdering a boyfriend at the time who was an assassin himself. Right after fulfilling her free, free hit contract by disposing of a Texan cowboy drug dealer, Angela asserts the right to leave the profession, but her boss, the syndicate man Rourke, played by Tom, uh, Clue Gulager, offers her one more job for a shitload of money, enough money for Angela to retire and support herself and her current boyfriend, talented but strong photographer Doug, Doug Reynolds, for years to come. Angela reluctantly agrees. The job won't be easy. All she has to do is to get rid of a top union official and to make it look like an accident. Angela uses her skills to infiltrate the widowed unionist's life, but when she is close to the striking distance, she begins to have second thoughts. She realizes that Rourke might have been feeding intelligence about her to her target's union buddies. Now, having established herself as a good actress, but fed up with the poor roles that Hollywood screenwriters are offering to female actors at the time, Yvette Mimieux decided to write her own choice for the perfect role, and used a rather formidable intelligence to make this one a memorable one. She played a script then titled Counterpoint, which was about a professional mob assassin who was completely immoral, and use the lady qualities to get close to targets and wipe them out without breaking any moral sweat. To prolific TV programming legends Aaron Spelling and Leonard Goldberg, Mimi was happy to, for them to accept the script, but they wanted to, to modify the role to soften up the lady assassin and make him more likable. She she agreed. The film retailed Hit Lady and premiered on American television as an ABC movie of the week on the 8th of October 1974, making one of the top-rated telepics of its year and one that was talked about for quite some time to come. Mimi has, must have had been some talent with writing because Hit Lady was a surefire way to make a solid telepic and the best in the 19th, and the result is a pretty exhilarating example of the best in the 1970s telepic market. And it should be said that many of the 1970s telepics, particularly the horror ones, were more sophisticated than many theatrical films. The film's plot is very roundly established and um, executed, with one shot director Tracy Keen Wynn, normally a writer by trade, taking on the duties with an impressive competence for a first timer. It is a scheme that it is a shame that this was his only directorial effort. Also notable is that his father Keenan Wing plays a role in the film as the cowboy drug dealer maybe rubs out in the film's opening act. While the film's, film's pace is a little on the slow side, and there is a bit of talkiness involved, this is not an impediment to the film at all. Mimi's writing skills shows us two conflicting sides of life as a female professional assassin, with a civilian life trying to build up a relationship with a struggling shadow, shadow bug boyfriend, bisexual actor Dak Rambo is one of his better roles, and the professional life she has while she's trying to get close to her unionist mark. Keeping in mind this is a 1970s telepic, the action scenes are pretty spectacular for the type of film. Solid car chase with a gnarly ending. By the way, the tires of Mimi's car are strangely big for the car's size, and a surprise downbeat ending that, surprisingly enough, plays into the morality of an assassin's life and the futility of the world's second oldest profession. While it is not anything stand out, Hit Lady does impress someone as a solid example of the best of the 1970s movie the week telepics. Now, for the gore report, there are some shootings and a guy getting killed when his car hits the business end of a forklift. No gore seen here, this being a 1970s telepic and all, but the violence was pretty decent for its day. Now, as for nudity, Yvette Mimieux's mind is as nice as her body. She would look really hot in that bikini she wears in the film's final scenes. Must have given plenty of 1970s viewers some motivation. While the mild sex thing she has with her target doll down for 1970s TV moral codes. No nudity seen here. I've decided to award Hit Lady with a B, which is a 6 out of 10, meaning it's a solid film that even those who don't like 1970s telepics might enjoy it considerably. It is surprisingly brisk, only about 71 minutes long in power format, so you won't be looking at you watching boredom. What a ride.
And that's it for that. And by the way, this is actually also the 50th episode, regular review I've done. Not including the special episodes I've done over the time. Yeah, so, and it's also Harmony Day, would you believe? Yeah, I hope you guys just keep watching. And I'll make plenty more videos as the time goes on. I'll, I'll try and get one done every three days or so. So it's going to be... So I'm going to be pretty busy with these. Anyway, enjoy your day, and this is it for this review.